everyone. Welcome to the Pikeville City Manager's Report. I'm your host, Jill Fraley Dotson, as always, joined by Philip Elswick, Pikeville City Manager. And today we have a special guest. Yep. Paul Bowles, General Manager of the Appalachian Wireless Serena, joins us. And we're going to talk about a lot of things coming up. But, Paul, thanks for being here with us. We appreciate it. Thank you. It's good to be back. So the purpose of today's show, as we always do, is to update um, our listeners and our viewers of the things going on in and around the city and what they can and how they can mark their calendars for the coming year. And, you know, we're here in January. We're coming off of a great year of, of shows and events and downtown um, venues. But this year we are going to be really jam-packed and kind Absolutely. of upping our game, so to speak, with all of the different events that we have and shows planned. And so we thought we'd have Paul come on today because Paul um, is doing a remarkable job at Absolutely. Appalachian Wireless Serena and um, has really put that uh, venue at another level mm -hmm. since it's being here. So let's talk a little bit about um, Paul and what his job is and then we'll, we'll speak to him. Right, Paul's the general manager of the expo. Or the arena. The arena. And, uh, I know. Put your dollar in the jar. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> He's been in Pikeville about a year and a half now, I think. And uh, he has totally transformed the arena from what it was when he arrived. Um, it. He has scheduled a lot of shows, uh, many shows. The, the arena has been busy most every day with a variety of different things, including events, shows, concerts, things of that nature. It's really become the economic engine that it's designed to be. It has a tremendous impact on, on the city and the region as a whole. Um, and 2019, as you mentioned, was a, a very busy year, but that's just a sampling of what we're going to see in the future. Uh, as the work that Paul's done there, he has developed a reputation for the arena, for the staff, that's only going to lead to bigger and better things in the future. One of the things, Paul, I know that you are so targeted on is making sure that there is something for everybody. Since you came from um, from Salem, you I remember the first time we talked, you said, you know, this is it's a great arena. It can be used for so many things other than what it's being used for now. So in the last year and a half, you've been able uh, to really, as Philip said, transform a lot of a lot of the ways that people see the arena. You do. Uh, you always try to have something for everyone, and it's hard. But, you know, if we announce an event, it's not your cup of tea, just wait. We'll find it. Yeah. We'll announce it. <laughs> There's always someone at the arena working on some type of show for the different genres, the different demographics that it, it, it'll, it'll uh, play to, and, you know, constantly looking for something that would work. Right now, our, our issue with the arena is coming. We, we just don't have the dates. There's a couple shows that we've had to say, sorry, mm -hmm. wish we could play it, but the date's not there. Um, but we're very excited. Uh, we think we're going in the right direction. We've, we've been able to go from five national acts in 2018 to 15 in 2019. And that was kind of our target, was to get 15. That size arena and, and the, the region should be able to support 15. So to be able to do it in one year, we're very excited about that. And we feel like, you know, we're doing our part, but we could do a little bit better. We're, we're figuring the economic impact of the bill in 2019 is probably a little bit north of $2 million. So we like to see that somewhere in the two and a half to $3 million in, in 2020. So that's, that's our goal. So as you mentioned, a lot of different things happened in 2019, uh, 15 national acts, which is, is really, really good. This year, um, when I look at the slate of events that are already scheduled or at least being discussed, it really amazes me uh, the broad spectrum of shows that are listed there. I think about the rodeo that, that is going to, okay, we're going to talk about that in just a little bit as far as what's going on there. But we're coming off um, the biggest weekend that the arena has ever seen yes. since the building was opened up years ago. Um, was New Year's Eve weekend, and I'll tell you, that it still blows my mind what happened in our city those three days. It, it's, it's exciting to see it all come together. It's kind of like the perfect storm. When we first started talking to uh, Nashville and the promoter that was there, uh, it was probably a year ago about Tyler Childers. And of course, at the time, Tyler Childers was playing small theaters, right. maybe a thousand seats. And so it's a lot of speculating that, you know, some point he's going to be big enough to play our arena and we want him here so we started on it about a year ago it was a lot of back and forth it actually took uh i guess once we started nailing it down it took probably about nine months to get it there and luckily for us tyler childers wanted to play the building so that yeah. that helps out tremendously 
you know, when you think about it, there are 40 venues in the Commonwealth of Kentucky that can host national acts. And that's not, you know, here it is, we're bordering West Virginia and Virginia and Tennessee, so, and Ohio, so they have their own venues as well. So to go out and scrap with them and try to get those better of the events is not always easy. And so it helps when that act is saying, yes, I want to play Pikeville. That's home. I want to go back. And, and I don't think anyone knew that it would grow to three shows. Uh, you know, you, you obviously think, well, Tyler Childers from Kentucky, he's going to be popular here. But as soon as his album hit number one, it was kind of like, okay, all bets are off. We're not sure where this is going to end up. And, you know, it ended up in three shows, three sold-out shows. And, and, yes, it's probably by far the biggest thing that's happened in, in, in the arena since it's been, been there since 2005. Uh, to have three sold-out shows is really unheard of. Uh, it doesn't matter what size building. It's just really hard to get a sold-out show these days. Uh, and so to do it three times, uh, as I was telling Philip in a conversation, there's buildings out there that just wishes they had one of those shows every four months, and here we did three in five days. So it was very exciting. The staff uh, did a tremendous job. Uh, they stepped up very professional. and. Uh, we're hearing that from Nashville now. They're, they're, we're getting several emails thanking us for how, how well it went. So it should lead to bigger and better things down the road. And don't you think so, too, that when the artists get wind of the type of atmosphere and the number of people that came and how quickly those three shows sold out, that they think, well, maybe I need to start giving Eastern Kentucky a little bit of attention. But right. it's not just us. I mean, that really became a regional, um, not just a three-state, but I'm talking about the entire part of our United States. So yeah, we, we had people come from Canada. We did. We over. had a very nice couple that had drove up from Florida mm -hmm. that bought tickets to come to the show. Uh, that were just just fell in love with Eastern Kentucky, so they had a hundred questions they wanted to ask about it, and and of course I was the wrong guy to run into. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, you know, I've only been here a year myself, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think I passed them off to Larry and exactly. let him uh, uh, pitch uh, the Eastern Kentucky. But it, it is, it, it's. Uh, we had an email yesterday from a promoter that's looking at a show in September, and his little closing line was, "Is congratulations on Tyler Childers," yeah. and he's in Birmingham, Alabama. So yeah, it's it's out there people are talking about it and it should lead to some some other shows down the road that you know hopefully are very profitable <laughs> you know we always ask Paul you know in, in closed meetings or whatever mm -hmm. you know what's coming next what com what's coming next right. and he always gets this kind of poker face and I'm thinking you know something <laughs> good is coming he just can't yet right, right. Um, but always know that when you mentioned it took nine months or the planning stage just started about a year ago, there's always something in the works for the next year. Always. And that's what's exciting. And knowing that, that the arena is getting the attention that it so deserves now. It is. And we're actually booking dates not only in the fall of 2020 right now. We've got a few agencies that are looking at 2021. Wow. And so that's how far out it is. And you really got to stay on your game. Uh, it's not like it used to be to where... You go, oh, I got an open date in March. I'll call somebody and see if they want it. Yeah. Uh, if you got an open date in March now, you're probably going to stay open. Uh, there's very few things that's going to turn that quick. So yeah. it, it, it's, it's, it's a lot of work, but, you know, the staff, uh, they step up every day and, and do what they need to do. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit more about your staff in just a minute because, you know, being able to see exactly what goes into mm -hmm the three nights that right. we had there. And really, you know, a few days before the first show started it, um, we're going to give them a little bit more love in just a minute. But, <laughs> but I want to talk to you. We mentioned about the arena being such an economic driver, and it's mm -hmm. really becoming what it's supposed to be. The city of Pikeville, that particular weekend, New Year's Eve weekend, we had a lot of things going on. We did. There were uh, two basketball tournaments mm -hmm. in town with um, with the high school having both the boys and girls basketball tournament. One was played at um, at Hambly, mm -hmm. the other was played at the U Pike Gym. So, you know, with the arena being right there in the middle, Winterfest right. was still open in the park, and it was ran over every day because right. the weather was good. <laughs> but our hotels in town, mm -hmm. it's unheard of for them to be, not unheard of for them to be sold out, right. but to be sold out in the capacity that they were mm -hmm. and even their restaurants having problems feeding the people because I hear that they, uh, some of them ran out of food yeah. because of the, the number of people that were there. What a great problem to have, but not awesome really problem. a great problem, but that's awesome. That's kind of the culmination of everything we work for every day. Yeah. And it's been a long time that we've been planting the seeds and laying the groundwork for that sort of weekend to happen in Pikeville. Uh, we now know it can be done. So, <laughs> no pressure. Not, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So, you know, those, that is exactly what the commission wants. They want to drive the economy of, of Pikeville, and then everybody in this region benefits from that. So having sold out uh, hotels to, to restaurants with, with long waiting lines, that's precisely what we want to see. That's what we try to do on a daily basis. So it's nice to see that happen. Uh, there's been so many positive comments about that weekend and all the things going on in town and, and, and nothing but positive comments about the arena and the concerts and Paul's staff there. Uh, that's pretty remarkable when you had, what, 18,000 people in the arena over three days yeah. to, to really have really good experiences for, for everybody. So it's a, a testament to the way we do things in Pikeville and to, be, to setting a goal and achieving that goal. Absolutely. Uh, talking about your staff for just a moment, you know, being able to see the work that they put into it prior to a show started, because a lot of the work happens that, that week before and preparing the building, making sure everything is the way that it's supposed to be for uh, the act that's coming in. But the last night, New Year's Eve, uh, of the Tyler Children's Concert, I was there. Uh, that's the night I got my tickets because I thought, you know, I've got to get my tickets first. There's not going to be any more opportunities, and then we get two more shows, and you know, the rest is history. Um, I do know people that bought tickets for all three nights, mm -hmm. so you know, they were repeat visitors. But the next morning, after uh, January first, we were getting ready for motocross coming up. Mm -hmm. the last, you know, that that first weekend, um, your cleaning staff stayed until the, the early morning hours of the next the day. day, worked all night long, and then they started moving dirt into the arena. But I can't imagine if we look back at the combined number of hours that your staff put in over that period of time, it has to be something that's off the charts. It is, but it's, it's, it comes with the, the, the beast of the, the industry. Uh, you know uh, there's gonna be times you're busy and then there's times to be slow. And uh, you have to take advantage of what we call prime dates. And uh, January, February, March are prime dates. So if we've got a date and we can do the event, we're going to do it, even if it means that, yeah, it's on top of another event. And while everybody's asleep, we're going to be yeah. changing things around. <laughs> <laughs> and you do that very often. Mm -hmm. um, also, not only do we have the big shows at the arena and the sold out shows, but our arena is used for a number of things that are not just in the, on the main floor. You have um, a lot of space that can be used for conventions and seminars and birthday parties, civic organizations. So let's talk a little bit about the other opportunities that people can use the arena for when they're not using the floor itself. Because I think daily, um, if not most days out of the week, the arena is being utilized for things other than big shows. It is. We're, you know, uh, the conference room or the, what we call the ballroom, the boardroom, they're being used, uh, you know, a couple times each week. Uh, even though the arena may be lights out, those rooms are hopping. And, uh, you know, we're doing weddings, we're doing conferences, we're doing, you know, business meetings. It's just a, it's another space that, you know, it could be utilized for whatever the person that wants to rent it for. Uh, we do have some rules, you know, no dead bodies. Uh, things like that, you know, we, we pass on those things. So no mortician, uh, you know, conferences or anything are to come. But, uh, you know, it's just whatever you, you need it for, we're there for you. Uh, Andrea Collins does a fantastic job of staying on top of that and getting it scheduled and making sure that we've allowed ourselves time to set your event and tear out the event for the next uh, event coming in. And she just, she... She's turnkey. She she works with you from the beginning to the very end, and, and it's a smooth transition. And she does a fantastic job. And so, uh, yeah, for if you need rental space, call us. We we, we have somewhere <laughs> we'll we'll rent you. We do. Speaking of that, we are very excited as we get closer to the opening of our Overlook Event Center, mm -hmm. which will also be managed by uh, the arena, Paul and Andrea and his staff. Um, the event center is one of those things as you drive by on 23 for a number of months people have been like what is that building what is going on up there I mean what's what's happened you know what is it but you can see it is it has taken shape the inside now is being worked on Andrea is booking you can take calls every day I know when I talked to Larry I guess yesterday he's like every single day we There's take a call about of an inquiry about about the the event center so an update on the event center mm -hmm. we are um 
really looking forward to the anticipated opening this spring. Absolutely. The event center, you know, it started construction last February and we are coming very near to the end of construction. I was there a few days ago and the, the sheetrock's up, the painting's beginning to happen, the, the floor tiling was there, not down yet, but the stone on the exterior of the building's going up and the metal roof. So we're getting really close to the to the end of uh, construction of that project. And, you know, it's located in such a way, as you said, that a lot of people see it. It's kind of become a landmark, really. Your eyes drawn to it when you're downtown, uh, which is what we wanted. We wanted it to be kind of a premier location for events in the city. Uh, I'm sure Paul has a number of plans for that. Uh, it's been something that we've talked about it's a one lot. one of those things, he gets that poker face. <laughs> yeah, like, I can't right, tell you what right. it is. <laughs> yeah, since Paul came here to manage an arena, and since then he's gotten a theater and now a new event center. So uh, your job's gotten bigger. It has. <laughs> Welcome to Pikeville. <laughs> I think it just shows that I, I, I'm not very good at negotiating. <laughs> <laughs> None of us are. Yeah. That's right. But the thing about the event center that we want to make sure everyone understands mm -hmm. is that not only, like you said, it has become a landmark and hasn't even opened yet, mm -hmm. but there are so many opportunities right. of events that can be held there. We're thinking about, you know, small concerts, mm -hmm. um, conventions, mm -hmm. uh, weddings, of course. Right. That's the big thing. Showers, birthday parties, family reunions. Uh, not only are you going to be able to use the inside of the space and the absolutely gorgeous patio mm -hmm. that will overlook the cut through, right. but but on the outside, you know, there's going to also be a stone fireplace mm -hmm. there with some green space. So if you're curious about outside weddings or things of that right. nature, just know that it's not just an indoor space. It can be used outside as well. Absolutely. It was designed in such a way that it's functional in a number of different ways. Uh, the inside can be divided into three smaller spaces rather than one, one room. So uh, there are so many uses yeah. for that building. And, and we chose to design it with the three smaller spaces or the ability to do that. Uh, so that it could f serve the expo or the arena, excuse me, in larger conferences with more breakout rooms and, and things of that nature. So it, uh, a lot of thought has gone into the way that was designed and, and the way it will be constructed. Uh, but, I, you know, I would say that the uses for that building are, are unlimited. They are limitless. It also has a full kitchen. Absolutely. In it where I know Wes is very excited. He's yes. our executive chef yes. at the arena and does a phenomenal job at anything mm -hmm. that he does. Is, is perfection, and he's excited about being able to use his skill yeah. up, Wes up is, on uh, that mountain. Phenomenal, and you can tell by me. That, yeah, <laughs> Wes cooks very well. Uh, yeah, I don't want to say I sample, but Wes has a tendency of you know. He needs a taste letting tester. Us, yeah, and right. uh, somehow it, it always ends at my office, so <laughs> I have the bigger portion of everyone. Uh, but yeah, we're very excited about the event center uh, right now. You know, with the, all the phone calls and all the excitement from the locals, we're kind of letting that play out first. Uh, we got to kind of you know shake out the schedule, is what's uh, how it's called, and, and figure out what's going to work uh, and when. So we kind of want to let the locals have the first opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, they have the weddings, the birthday parties, proms, you know, mm -hmm. senior dances, whatever they can think of. And then we're going to yeah, our first focus right now is we're looking at conferences. What can we bring in multi-day that you know now we have this meeting space? How we can utilize all of it, not just the arena and the, the event center or the app, but even the, the Hilton and places like that that we can just utilize the whole city for. And then after that, you'll probably start seeing some shows in the line of like, uh, you know, comedians, things like that we can do in there. And it's, right now it's just playing out what that schedule is going to look like after, because it is the new toy, everybody wants to use it. So we got to kind of serve that space for them. And then we'll start getting an idea of what months are going to work there for the different types of uh, things that are out that we can book. Another great component that will be uh, just adjacent to the event mm -hmm. center are cabins that are going to be built there. And you can see those retaining walls start to take, take shape too as you look up at the event center. But that's just another way that we can utilize our area to draw in conferences, mm -hmm. to draw in business retreats um, from, from all over. Um, that will come in, use the cabins, use the event center, right. and then and then really spend their dollars in our area, which is again what what our intended purpose is. Absolutely, that project was uh, something the commission had wanted to do for some time, uh, and we arrived at a point in time that we could do that project. And uh, we are starting with three cabins, hopefully, and uh, intend to expand that to many more cabins in the future. So it's. Uh, there's a lot of growth there yeah. left as well. 
A lot of growth. Let's talk about some more growth that we're seeing, and that is the um, Appalachian Center for the Arts, formerly Jenny Wiley mm -hmm. Theater, and it has really become, um, I always talk about um, the crown jewel of the downtown area being the Appalachian Wireless Arena, but now Appalachian Center for the Arts is really just another jewel in that in that crown because uh, Robin and Eric are doing a phenomenal job yes. at um, getting different events in there. The shows that they're booking really appeal to so many different people in our area. And again, there is something for everyone there. And she's already got a list of um, shows lined up for the early part of 2020 mm -hmm. that really appeals to so many people. Absolutely. The city or the expo, the arena, excuse me, has been operating that building since April, I believe it was. And uh, Robin was hired as the director there and it has uh, really grown much faster than we anticipated. Uh, but it's she's doing and accomplishing the things that we had in mind when we took that building. Uh, there is so much that, that she has going on that I don't think Paul or I either one know it all. But it's, you just uh, get out of the way and let her do her do, job. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. She's doing a great and job. she is. She and her staff, her husband Eric, uh, the director of education there, and, and that program's been very successful, bringing uh, kids to the theater, mm -hmm. training them in different ways, having children's theater. So, you know, it's a great addition to the city. Uh, it brings a lot of things that we didn't have in the past, uh, which is a quality of life issue. So. Certainly we're we're so. glad to have that. And I will say, if you haven't seen a show at the app, you're really missing out. The intimate setting, mm -hmm. it is just a phenomenal place to have a show. It really is. You know, they had, um, uh, I'll go back to Donnie Baker, and he, you know, had one night scheduled there, saw the sell, how right. fast it sold right. out, was kind enough to say, yeah, I'll do another show mm -hmm. that was, again, sold out. So many people came into uh, into the theater that had never been, never been there, to see yeah. a show. But again, offering something for um, every demographic that, that you can think of is there. She has some, Charlotte's Web is mm -hmm. coming up for the kids, and I know she'll do some matinees for that, mm -hmm. which really brings in a lot of school children that may right. have never had the opportunity before mm -hmm. to be in a theater-type setting. And Mick Foley is coming in March. Mick Foley's coming. Uh, former WWE uh, superstar. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's been you know, Cactus Jack. I, I don't even think I can remember all of his characters that he's, it's a long career he's had. Uh, Mick is a uh, published author and uh, he has, I don't, he has a speaking engagement that he does, uh, but it's very funny, so you can almost say he's kind of a comedian in it, but uh, it's very enjoyable to watch him. Uh, he, he, is, he is one of those characters that you don't want to miss uh, in, a, in a setting like that. I'm excited. When, the, when she mentioned that he was coming, I, I kind of thought, what in the world <laughs> you know, is this going to be? But again, people reinvent themselves, and certainly yeah. um, he has done that. As we get, we're running out of time and we have so much to talk about still, let's go down some of the events that are coming up at the arena. Um, in the coming months. Okay, well, the, the, right now, of course, we're getting ready for high school basketball with the All-A tournament. Uh, I think we'll do that for the next 10 days. Uh, then we have PJ Mask, uh, Save the Day, coming in on January 22nd. Uh, and then after that, I think we're, you know, a couple more U-Pike games, some more basketball. Uh, we have Brantley Gilbert coming up on February 29th. Uh, and then the one that we're excited about, uh, Larry has work really hard on this and, and I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget because I'm still learning all the Kentucky <laughs> stuff uh, but the KSH AA grade school state wrestling is going to be February 1 Fantastic. and 2 and th we're excited for that to have you know we really need to focus on some sporting events especially on the high school middle school level and get those to this side of the state and uh, Larry has done a fantastic job of talking them into coming to, to Eastern Kentucky for a change. And we're very excited about it. We're pulling out all the stops. And we think, uh, we think people are going to be pleasantly surprised with the, the, the local, uh, the restauranters, the, the mm -hmm. hotels, and the, the, the retail shops of, of the many of people that will come in for, for those two days for those wrestling tournaments. So we're very excited about that. Uh, and we, we, we have the uh, East Kentucky Stampede Championship Rodeo. Sorry, I, I, I was part of the rodeo in Salem for, for you know, all those years. I think it's been around 53 years, so make sure I get the right stampede out there. Uh, that's coming up in March, uh, March 21, 22, I believe, or 2021. Uh, very excited about that. It's, it's been uh, several years since there was a rodeo in town. Uh, it's a professional rodeo. It's sanctioned by the uh, uh, Professional Rodeo Association. Uh, very excited about that as well. It's had a phenomenal response from locals. We haven't even started advertising yet. 
just Josh out there talking about <laughs> it, and we've, we've had some really good ticket sales for that, so we're very excited. Uh, we have Monster Trucks coming back with the, the Traxxas Group. That'll be in April, uh, the week after Hillbilly Days. And uh, Hillbilly Days, of course, is Hank Williams Jr., mm -hmm. uh, a legend in himself. You know, it's, it, and and it's, 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 it's very exciting that we have Hank Jr., but to turn around in May, we're going to do Leonard Skinner on our farewell tour. So to have those two heavyweights, uh, basically a month apart is very exciting. Ticket sales have been phenomenal. Uh, we're very excited about both of those shows. And then uh, we've probably got a few more announcements that we're going to make in the next couple of weeks. Uh, you know, there's uh, different things we're working on. There's a couple of classic rock shows in there, obviously more country. Uh, there's some family entertainment in there, some sporting family entertainment in there that everyone's been asking about. Uh, those those announcements are coming up, uh, and uh, yeah, just looking for an exciting 2020. Nice way to tease the coming Absolutely. year, right? Mm -hmm. Well, with that said, we are out of time for today, and Paul, just thank you for taking the time to be thank with you. us today to and here. updating us on everything that's going on at the arena, the app, and the event center. <laughs> uh, you're a pretty busy guy. We try I will to stay say busy. That. Yeah. yeah, but you like it that way. <laughs> it's boring any other way. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and Philip, we want to invite everyone to our commission meetings each month. Yep, the second and fourth Mondays at 6 p.m. at right. City Hall. This has been the Pikeville City Manager's Report. Thank you so much for joining us.